Porter Gals presents Terrifying Tales. Hi, I'm Debbie. And I'm Allison. And we're the Polter Gals. Spooky. <laughs> Ghost Stories of the Rocky Mountains. Written by Barbara Smith. Published in 1999 by Lone Pine Publishing. Supernatural Silverton. In the days of the Wild West, gold rush miners used any and every means at their disposal to locate the treasure buried deep within the mountainsides. One of the most inventive and accurate, as was later proven, as these creative methods was a plan implemented by a Scotsman named Edward Ennis. He arrived in Silverton, Colorado in the summer of 1875 with exact directions to a mother load of riches, gold. These directions have been given to him, he explained, by spirits. Enos, already independently wealthy, was so sure that his supernatural instructions were correct that he brought out the owners of a particular mining property at more than fair market price. As soon as he owned the land that the spirits had directed him to purchase, he began to dig. Despite the passage of months and then years without success, Enos never wavered in his determination that he would eventually hit pay dirt. He was so convinced that he would come to an enormous cache of gold that he disregarded all the silver veins that he came across in his search. As the hunt progressed, Enos continued to receive messages of direction from those on the other side. They instructed him to dig, for instance, deeper or lower or to the right. Once, a supernatural communication warned him of the impeding flood in his mind and advised him how to prevent lives from being lost as a result. As always, Enos followed the ghostly advice. And just a few days later, a wall crumbled and thousands of gallons of water poured into the shaft. Fortunately, the well-informed mine owner was prepared and was therefore able to get every miner safely to the surface. Despite his complete lack of success and dwindling personal resources, Edward Ennis was continuing on his quest until the bank that was financing his enterprise went bankrupt. And so, therefore, did he. Enos died not long afterward, maintaining to his dying breath that he was on the right path, and that his huge respiratory of gold was close to the point where he had to seize operations. Edward Enos never reached the elusive riches. The determined Scotsman, with a bent for listening to phantoms, had been all but forgotten by the people of Silverton, when six years later, Another immigrant from Scotland arrived into town, Mary Muriel, or Highland Mary, as she was known, was also apparently a person of independent financial means. Like Enos, she believed that the ultimate goal seen was so far just out of reach. Not content to spend 10 years digging like Enos had, Highland Mary ordered the deceased man's mine shaft to be blasted open. There just 1,200 feet, 365 meters from where Edward Enos had been forced to shut down his tunnel efforts, was a veritable lake of gold, millions of dollars worth of gold, as well as silver, zinc, and copper. Everyone connected with the mine became wealthy beyond their wildest dreams. The metals were mined to the last ounce people finally realized that the spirit that had directed Edward Enos all those years had been right. According to Mary, those same voices had also guided her undertaking. Stranger still, once the mine's riches had been depleted, Highland Mary Muriel vanished. In an inquiring twist to this legend, miners J.C. Dunn and William Quinn discovered a mine 
near Silverton. They named the mine the Highland Mary and credited the find to following the directions given by a ghost. Be sure to follow us on Facebook or on YouTube at The Porter Gals or on Instagram at The underscore Porter Gals. You can also find us wherever you get your podcast or at RogueMediaNetwork.com. You've been listening to The Polter Gals, a Rogue Media Network podcast. This has been a Rogue Media podcast.